Hi, I'm Dr. Kev, and in this video, we're going to choose six cars to be a benchmark for Project 171. Welcome to Car Design Workshop. To start off with, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone that's been watching and subscribed to this channel. I thank you for your comments, and at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a look at a styling study I did fairly early in the project. The last video was all about numbers. But in this video, we want to move past that, have a look at styling as well, and pick six cars that will form benchmarks for Project 171. The first benchmark car will be the Mazda MX-5. This is the Lotus Elan with extra mass for the masses. And unlike the British sports cars that it took its style from, it just works. It's a reliable car and probably the only one on this list that you could consider being a daily driver. And while they work from a reliability point of view, they also work from a handling point of view. In their stock form, they're a little gutless, but they're an enjoyable car to drive. It's no surprise that it's gone on to be the world's best-selling roadster. It's simple, it's lightish, and it's affordable. And the MX-5 provides the lower bounds for performance of Project 171. There's no real point in building a sports car that is anything slower or heavier than an MX-5, otherwise you're better off to just go and buy one of those. While I won't be borrowing much of the styling from an MX-5, I certainly want to borrow some of the Japanese reliability we see in this car. Some people even use most of the parts of MX-5 to make our number two car on the list. And that number two is a Lotus 7 style kit car. This is the car that I would build if I was wise. These cars are cut back and simple and all about DIY performance. There are many different kit cars that borrow from that Lotus 7 template and it really sets the benchmark for an engaging sports car. And for number three, after two cars inspired by Lotus, let's go to the real deal. The Lotus Elise is a car that's about handling more than it is about outright speed. It borrows from the Lotus ethos of adding lightness and simplicity, and when it starts blowing head gaskets, add a Toyota motor. It has interesting construction with an aluminium monocoque, and with its lightweight, if you do a track day with it, you can drive around all day without destroying your brakes and tyres. This particular car is owned by my friend Justin. We work together in the US, and this is Justin in his natural environment, obviously trying to improve the performance of that mouse. Number four on our list is the Jaguar XJ13. This is one of one. This is not really a road car and never was a race car. It was the successor to the D-Type that never raced. And this makes the list because it is unique, because it is exclusive and the styling is gorgeous. The car is low and sleek. The styling of this car isn't just about beauty. There is a raw quality to it that I'd love to capture in my own vehicle. Number five is the Austin Healey, and in particular, the 104. If you're wondering why this is on the list, you really need to check the first video I uploaded. But beyond that, it's a really clean, uncomplicated design. It's a car for every season, as long as that season's either spring or autumn. And the silhouette of this car is unmistakably British 1950s sports car. This is where designers were aware of drag coefficients, but not yet concerned about downforce. And number six on the list is the Porsche 550. This is the tiny Beetle that went racing. And I love these early Porsches. They were really different to what was out there at the time. They succeeded as a mid-engine sports car 10 years before the Jaguar didn't. They were small and light. And like the Healey, the lines were simple and uncomplicated. And as a bonus benchmark, we'll include cafe races or motorbikes with just about everything on show. If there was any styling brief for this car, it would be this. An Austin Healey and a Porsche 550 have a baby that grows up wanting to go cafe racing. The elegance and simplicity of the 1950 sports cars with a bit of the mechanical stuff on show. And trying to borrow from this, I did a bit of a styling study in SolidWorks. 
The point of this was to see if I could start to model the sorts of shapes I was interested in seeing in these cars. I wanted to aim for that really low rear deck height that we see in the Jaguar, the small footprint of the Porsche 550, the front three quarters of the Austin Healey with upright headlights, and a low nose that offers good visibility. Now this is very far from what I want to finally achieve with this car, but it did show me that it was going to be possible to model the sorts of shapes I was looking for in the software. Another goal was to be able to 3D print these shapes so that I could start to get a bit more of a tactile understanding of the main geometry and shapes that we'd be aiming for. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to any comments to see if I've missed any cars that should have been a clear benchmark for this project. Thank you for your time.